Uncle Podger hangs a picture. Harris always reminds me of my Uncle Podger. You never saw such a commotion up and down a house in all your life as when my Uncle Podger undertook to do a job. A picture would have come home from the frame makers and be standing in the dining room waiting to be put up and Aunt Podger would ask what was to be done with it and Uncle Podger would say Oh you leave that to me don't you any of you worry yourselves about that I'll do all that and then he would take off his coat and begin He would send the girl out for six pen worth of nails and then one of the boys after her to tell her what size to get from that he would gradually work down and start the whole house now you go and get me my hammer will you he would shout and bring me the rule tom and i shall want the ladder and i had better have a kitchen chair too and jim you run round to mr goggles and tell him pass kind regards and hopes his legs better and will he lend him his spirit level and don't you go maria because i shall want somebody to hold the light and tom where's tom tom you come here i shall want you to hand me up the picture and then he would lift up the picture and drop it and it would come out of the frame and he would try to save the glass and cut himself and then he would spring round the room looking for his handkerchief he could not find it because it was in the pocket of the coat he had taken off and he did not know where he had put the coat and all the house had to leave off looking for his tools and start looking for his coat why he would dance round and hinder them doesn't anybody in the whole house know where my coat is i never came across such a set in all my life upon my word i didn't six of you and you can't find a coat that i put down not 5 minutes ago well of all the then he'd get up and find that he had been sitting on it and would call out oh you can give it up i've found it myself now might just as well ask the cat to find anything as expect you people to find it and when half an hour had been spent in tying up his finger and a new glass had been got and the tools and the ladder and the chair and the candle had been brought he would have another go the whole family including the girl and the charwoman standing round in a semicircle ready to help two people would have to hold the chair and a third would help him up on it and hold him there and a fourth would hand him a nail and a fifth would pass him up the hammer and he would take hold of the nail and drop it there he would say in an injured tone now the nail's gone and we would all have to go down on our knees and grovel for it why he would stand on the chair and grunt and want to know if he was to be kept there all evening the nail would be found at last but by that time he would have lost the hammer where's the hammer what did i do with the hammer great heavens seven of you gaping round there and you don't know what i did with the hammer we would find the hammer for him and then he would have lost sight of the mark he had made on the wall where the nail was to go in and each of us had to get up on the chair beside him and see if we could find it and we would each discover it in a different place and he would call us all fools one after another and tell us to get down and we would take the ruler and remeasure and find that he wanted half that even and 3 inches from the corner and would try to do it in his head and go mad and we would all try to do it in our heads and all arrive at different results and sneer at one another and in the general row the original number would be forgotten and uncle pojo would have to measure it again he would use a bit of string this time and at the critical moment when he was leaning over the chair at an angle of 45 and trying to reach a point 3 inches beyond what was possible for him to reach the string would slip and down he would slide on the piano 
a really fine musical effect being produced by the suddenness with which his head and body struck all the notes at the same time. At last, Uncle Podger would get the spot fixed again, and put the point of the nail on it with his left hand, and take the hammer in his right hand. And, with the first blow, he would smash his thumb, and drop the hammer with a yell, on somebody's toes. Aunt Maria would mildly observe that, next time Uncle Podger was going to hammer a nail into the wall, she hoped he'd let her know in time, so that she could make arrangements to go and spend a week with her mother while it was being done. Oh you women, you make such a fuss over everything. Uncle Podger would reply, picking himself up. Why, I like doing a little job of this sort. And then he would have another try, and, at the second blow, the nail would go clean through the plaster, and half the hammer after it, and Uncle Podger be precipitated against the wall with force nearly sufficient to flatten his nose. Then we had to find the rule and the string again, and a new hole was made, and, about midnight, the picture would be up very crooked and insecure. The wall for yards round looking as if it had been smoothed down with a rake, and everybody deadbeat and wretched except Uncle Podger. There you are. He would say, stepping heavily off the chair onto the charwoman's cones, and surveying the mess he had made with evident pride. Why, some people would have had a man in to do a little thing like that.